So someone who sent me a link yesterday said, Harley, can you please explain what Joe McCola and Mark Sisson are rambling on about in this little uh, snippet? Let's listen. For people to understand. And it, it is that word, effortlessly. Because once you, if you're still living in the carbohydrate paradigm and you're still a, a slave to having to eat uh, a, a small meal every, you know, five or six times a day, like the, the conventional wisdom mantra has had for the last couple of decades. When you're in that, uh, if you do skip meals, the brain, you know, the, 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 um, hypothalamic pituitary axis goes into a panic mode, secretes cortisol and stuff. Which is absolute rubbish. You know, <laughs> it, Mark's trying to instill fear in people saying, if you miss a meal just by 10 minutes, you'll be like, your body's going to be freaking out. You know what I mean? It's such rubbish. People just spew nonsense and people with no idea believe what they say. So it's basically the confused leading the confused. The blind leading the blind. It starts to literally tear down muscle tissue to, um, to send a few amino acids to the liver to become glucose to continue to fuel the brain. It's, a, it's not a pretty picture. On the, conversely, when you are finally fat adapted, uh, that doesn't happen. There's By fat adapted, Mark is referring to in ketosis. He doesn't really like to use that word in ketosis. Why? Because a lot of doctors and scientists have proven that when you're in ketosis long term, your body's freaking out. And you have a risk of going into ketoacidosis. Look it up. Very serious condition. So Mark Sisson is basically prescribing a Dr. Atkins style program. He sells the protein powders like Dr. Atkins did. He sells the B12, iron, zinc, selenium supplements like Dr. Atkins did. He sells the little bars. He sells all these antioxidants. He sells all the, the fish oils and stuff like that. He says, make sure you eat your fish to get your omega-3. And buy my omega-3 supplements as well. <laughs> you know, it's crazy what these guys sell. But hey, they're making a killing, making a lot of money on people's ignorance. Telling people good things about their bad habits, saying, eat bacon, eggs for breakfast, and say no to cardio. Everyone wants to hear that. Oh, right, don't have to exercise? Great, I just walk around in the office, eat more bacon. You know what I mean? Let's listen more. There's no panic mode. There's no sec the, the cortisol secretion doesn't happen. Um, you access the stored body fat after 21 days. You've also become keto adapted, and and so your body produces ketone bodies. And these are very keto adapted. Interesting. Mark doesn't like to use the word ketosis because, it, like I said before, everyone knows how dangerous that is when you stay in that and try and walk around and function in normal life. efficient little uh, fuel bits uh, and the brain upregulates its use of ketones and now it, it, it the brain it takes less glucose to fuel the brain because the brain actually prefers to run on ketones uh, the, sorry the brain prefers to run on ketones you know what I mean absolute rubbish again Mark's just telling people good things about their bad habits get into ketosis don't eat carbohydrates eat as much fat as you can and like you be so dumbed out and can't think. You just buy anything I sell you. Doesn't make any sense, but it makes a lot of dollars. Look at Dr. Atkins. Dr. Atkins is dead. He died from heart attack. He fell over, hit his head, fatal heart attack. The autopsy report indicated severe heart disease, clogged arteries. He weighed 258 pounds in the autopsy table. Rest in peace, Dr. Atkins. But his company is still alive today, still promoting the high-fat, low-carb, you know, diet that Mark Sisson is now prescribing. So basically, all we have is Mark Sisson's grab that template from Dr. Atkins and using it, and just rehashing the different name, <laughs> same ingredients, same frying pan, just different name at the end. Crazy. Uh, you know, you're right. And it, from an evolutionary perspective, uh, for two and a half million years, humans did not get a lot of vegetables. I mean, contrary to what you know, fruitarians are saying and other things, you know, we lived on meat, fish, fowl, eggs, insects, and some plant matter. But that plant matter was probably. I want to see Mark Sisson get a cockroach and put it in his mouth and chew it. You know what I mean? We can't even catch freaking animals. You know what I mean? I'm fitter than Mark Sisson. I can run faster than him. I can run circles around him, but I can't even catch a chicken. 
I've tried it before at the farm, trying to catch a, a, a chicken. You know what I mean? You can pick up a tame chicken who's got a name called Bessie, but you can't catch a wild animal by running it down. You throw a rock at something, you're not going to get nothing. You're going to starve before you catch anything. Anything you're going to catch is cockroaches, maggots, and some dead flesh. I want to see Mark Sisson drive past on his, in his sports car convertible, top down, drive down the Malibu Highway, see a, a dead deer on the side of the road, stop and just start biting into it and go, Primal Blueprint, yeah! That's what I want to see Mark Sisson do. Otherwise, it's just talk. It's just telling people good things about their bad habits. Uh, you know, a, a cup of blueberries, uh, steamed broccoli later on that night doesn't add up to 150 grams of carbohydrate, which is sort of the high end. On the other hand, fruit's not a great choice if you're trying to lose weight uh, because it is a high, high source of sugar. Um, but you're a... Uh, you're, uh, so Mark Sisson says, fruit makes you fat. Oh, obviously, look at that. Insidious obesity, Mark. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's fucking crazy, man. These people say, oh, but you, know, you shouldn't eat more than 150 grams of carbohydrates because you'll become obese. That's what Mark Sisson says. 150 grams of carbs plus per day will create insidious obesity. I'll tell you what. Every single freaking obese client person I've had, I've mentored, obese, when they go vegan, go high carb, low fat on the fruits or even starches, boom, the weight drops down. They're eating as much as they want. Never calorie restriction. I don't take people on who want to calorie restrict. You know, as soon as I say, if you're calorie restrict, I don't want to have anything to do with you. You can go to eat as much as you care for. You know what I mean? No calorie restriction on my program. So what happens is their weight drops down. Why? Because the fat you eat, the fat you wear, the carbs you eat, becomes the glycogen you get to train with, look after your kids with, play with your kids with. You know, have sex with, be proficient at work with, get fit with, get lean, strong and fit with. You know what I mean? Dance with, have fun with, joke with, do YouTube videos with. You know what I mean? It's basic common sense. The carbs you eat becomes the glycogen and the fat you eat is the fat you wear. Simple as that. So Mark Sisson, I'll get razzed up when I hear this crap, man, because it's, you know, then Mark Sisson says, only eat fruit if you're an athlete. How the fuck is someone going to become an athlete if they're not eating high carbohydrate? Where the fuck are they going to get their glycogen from? Excuse the French, but where are they going to get their glycogen from? It's insane when people say, you shouldn't eat carbohydrates unless you're an athlete. I'm an athlete, and I coach people to become athletes. And if you've got kids, if you've got extra weight to carry around, if you're using your brain a lot, you're a fucking athlete. Congratulations. Get up, step up, carb up to continue doing that. If you want to get fitter and you cut your carbohydrates down, you're cutting your glycogen down. And it doesn't matter how fit you are or how unfit you are, when you cut your carbs down, your glycogen down, your motivation for an active lifestyle is boom, out the window, see you later. It doesn't happen that way. And I've been the same body weight and similar body fat composition for the last 10 years. So obviously something's going on here. I've got a friend who lives near Mark Sisson in California, and he says, Mark doesn't actually look like the photos he puts up on the net. I'm thinking, interesting. So I looked up the dates and those photos are put up four, five, six years ago. That's why we don't see any recent photos of Mark Sisson. So Mark, please put up a recent photo with the newspaper and prove me wrong. Um, interesting, interesting, interesting. I love it when people make all these claims and they use the same photo from like five years ago. And You know what I mean? <laughs> it's like, I want to see recent stuff. Always ask your guru for recent stuff. You know what I mean? Recent stuff today, email your guru, say, show, take your shirt off and show us a photo. Stand in front of the camera and show us what you look like and if you've got a big gut or not. What are people doing behind the scenes? What do they look like behind the scenes? That's the question of the day. So is a high-carb, low-fat diet going to make you fat? You know what I mean? <laughs> it's in crazy what people say. So what happens if you go to Mark Sisson's forum, you see people constantly binging on chocolate and ice cream and pizzas and just the weights going up and down and their moods are going. People who are trying to be athletes are going, oh, I can't even train, you know. I read about one story of a boxer. He goes, I keep getting punched in the head at training. <laughs> no wonder, man, you're undercarbed. You can't, can't focus, you know what I mean? So carb up, carb up. But that's the world we live in, you know. We live in such a, people with such ignorance. And that's why I get hyped up, man, because I hate seeing people getting dropped off the deep end. I hate seeing people getting ripped off by these, these 
hucksters, man. I hate seeing that. You know what I mean? They say you can't be a vegan. Like Macola and Mark Sisson say, you can't be a vegan because you won't get enough protein, B12, iron, antioxidants. So they say eat the metabolic typing, blueprint, shoe print, high fat, low carb diet. St say no to fruit, maximum two pieces a day, maybe, if you're an athlete. And then they sell you the B12 sprays. They sell you the iron and the zinc and the, you know, the niacin supplements. They sell you the antioxidants. They sell you the protein powders and the fish oils and the DHA and stuff. You know what I mean? So they say you can't get that as a vegan, high carb, low fat is dangerous because you miss out on all these nutrients. So eat this low carb, high fat, animal based craziness diet, carbohydrate restriction, calorie restriction thing, and buy all the supplements that I said you can't get on a vegan diet. Just buy them anyway. <laughs> Doesn't make any sense, but it makes a crap load of dollars. You know what I mean? So fruit makes you fat, carbs make you fat. Where's the fat? I'd like to see that. Absolute rubbish. Eat enough carbs per day. 10 grams of carbs per kilo of body weight per day or, or five grams of carbs per pound of body weight per day if you're in the Northern Hemisphere using you know, other systems, metric systems. Carb up. And then you have enough glycogen to be able to go, hang on, these guys are talking absolute freaking rubbish. Carbs are your friends. The fat you eat is the fat you wear. The carbs becomes the glycogen you get to get fit with. You know what I mean? Get fit with. Take advice from people getting the results you desire. Mark, this needs to be really fit 10 years ago. He ain't fit no more. Joe McCullough used to run 250 marathons. That's fast, man. That is very fast. You know what I mean? Sure, we've got some vegan runners who are running 214s and 220s, but Joe McCullough, 250 marathoner, many years ago in his high carbohydrate days. Listen to his audio. He tells you that. I'm not making anything up here. And now Joe McCullough says, I don't run at all. <laughs> he says, actually, I can't run. I don't have any motivation to run. <laughs> and he thinks that's healthy. I'll tell you what, if you don't have motivation to exercise because you're so undercarb, you're so glucose exhausted, you're so glycogen deficient, that is not healthy. Healthy is high carb. Healthy is healthy glucose levels. Yeah, so I'd like to see Joe McCollum and Mark Sisson's blood tests. I'd like to see their glucose levels, their hemoglobin A1C. I'd like to see their cortisol levels. I'd like to see their hormonal levels, their B12 levels, homocysteine levels, triglyceride levels, MCV levels. I'd like to see these levels on their blood tests. How can they never put them up? That's a good question. I put my blood tests up for transparency to show people, hey, this is what I'm doing, this is what I'm eating, and this is what's providing. This is what my body looks like. That's what my fitness is. I'd like to be transparent. If people don't show you transparency, They've got something to hide. Simple as that. Doesn't make them bad people. I'm just saying bad advice. Watch out because it's going to drop you off the deep end. I see it all the time. We run the largest raw foods website around so we see quickly what works and what doesn't. I've been working in the health and fitness industry for the last 11 years, since 1999. I've seen a lot of shit come and go. A lot of people end up in mental wards, fat, sick, depressed, anorexic, even dead. You know what I mean? So be careful who you take advice from. Be careful and use common sense, you know. Whenever someone says talks about ketones are good and fat adapted and buy my you know whey protein powder stevia sweetened artificial rubbish. So whenever someone starts talking like that, you know what I mean that fruit's going to make you fat and stay away from high carb foods, they wouldn't have a clue. And these people they put ice cream, you know Ben and Jerry's ice cream in the same thing as bananas. They put Big Macs in the same category as steamed rice and broccoli. So bottom line, take advice from people getting the results you desire and be careful out there because there's a lot of hucksters just ready to, just to take your money, man. Like little crabs walking around just trying to steal your money. Crazy. On the other hand, fruit's not a great choice if you're trying to lose weight uh, because it is a high source of sugar. Um, but you're a... Uh, you're, uh... On the other hand, fruit's not a great choice if you're trying to lose weight. Uh, because it is a high source of sugar. Um, but you're a, uh, you're a, uh... on the other hand, fruit's not a great choice if you're trying to lose weight, uh, because it is a high source of sugar. Um, but you're a, uh, you're a, uh... on the other hand, fruit's not a great choice if you're trying to lose weight, uh, because it is a high source of sugar. Um, but you're a, uh, you're a, uh... on the other hand, fruit's not a great choice if you're trying to lose weight, uh, because it is a high source of sugar. Um, but you're, uh, you're, uh, on the other hand, fruit's not a great choice if you're trying to lose weight, uh, because it is a high source of sugar. Um, but you're, uh, you're, uh, on the other hand, fruit's not a great choice if you're trying to lose weight, uh, 
uh, because it is a high source of sugar. Um, but you're, uh, you're, uh, on the other hand, fruit's not a great choice if you're trying to lose weight, uh, because it is a high source of sugar. Um, but you're, uh, you're, uh, on the other hand, fruit's not a great choice if you're trying to lose weight, uh, because it is a high source of sugar. Um, but you're, uh, you're, uh, on the other hand, fruit's not a great choice if you're trying to lose weight, uh, because it is a high source of sugar. Um, but you're, uh, you're, uh,